The Incredible Hulk was created by gamma rays. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. The gamma rays that caused the Incredible Hulk were actually low energy compared to the ones that we're interested in. As soon as that crate arrived, we knew that we were beginning an intense few months of integrating all the different subsystems before shipping it to the telescope. It is a global project. Uh, we now are almost 2,000 people working on this project. Okay, here we go. Together with the team, we're trying to make it work, and um, we're running into problems all over the place because no one's done this, so no one knows what's best. Problems just come up all the time. There's, there's always something to troubleshoot, and it's become kind of a hobby to, to deal with those things. You got lucky. This is easily the fastest I've ever assembled one. What we're doing with the Trankov Telescope Array is viewing light that's a trillion times more energetic than we can see with our eyes. These trillion electron volt gamma rays, each one of them collides with the atmosphere, and it basically shatters a molecule of air. Now, some of those particles can emit a flash of blue light called Cherenkov radiation. And so what our camera does is that it collects that flash of Cherenkov light, and together you make this movie at a billion frames per second of the air shower, the air cascade of particles developing in the atmosphere. And the technology, the photon detector technology that we're using here, they have to be very fast and we need to be able to identify individual single photons that hit the surface. So I think I get a nice pulse now this time. And by measuring these gamma rays, measuring their intensity as a function of energy, their characteristics as a function of time, we learn about the acceleration processes of the charged cosmic rays inside the sources. And through this instrument, we can view some of the most extreme and fascinating objects in the universe. We might also be able to detect dark matter. We know that it makes up most of the matter in the universe, and yet we basically have no idea what it is. And so if we could detect dark matter particles colliding with one another, converting into very high energy photons, then we could confirm the idea that dark matter is made of particles. And that would push the field forward in terms of understanding what this kind of shadow matter throughout the universe is actually made of. I got excited about astroparticle physics when I was actually in college as an undergrad, uh, much like the students who are in the lab here today. It makes me happy to know that I'm part of such a big collaboration that's striving towards the future, that's striving towards knowledge. When it comes together, you realize, oh wow, <laughs> so many people have put so much time into this and here it all is, you know, it's working. <laughs> the story of the integration here at the University of Wisconsin will come to an end, uh, but that'll start a new chapter, which is getting everything to work on the telescope. I'm sure the first time we turn it on, we'll see some surprises. <laughs> we'll need to do some more work and get everything tuned correctly. But I'm confident that once we do that, we'll be able to detect these air showers and start doing science with them.